Fluorochromes all basically work on the same principle in that um, we, we, we excite the fluorochrome by, um, by a, a laser, and this laser should be roughly in the area of the maximum um, extinction coefficient of the fluorochrome. And once the um, electron goes into the higher orbit pole, which is quite unstable, um, it will then go back to the stable orbital. Now, within this process, there's a certain amount of heat dissipated, and this is consequential in that the excitation wavelength and the emission wavelength of the photon falling back down to the more stable uh, configuration will always be a longer wavelength than the excitation. Um, and uh, this is the, the, the basic state of play for, for all fluorochromes, that you will excite at a lower wavelength and you will emit at a higher wavelength. And this very, very useful tool um, is the Spectrum Viewer. And the, the, the advantage of this tool is that it will give you some degree of, of capacity of looking at which fluorochromes will fit onto your particular instrument. However, please remember this is very graphical and very often um, you can be misled by this tool sometimes. Um, so be very, very careful when using this tool. Don't exclude fluorochromes um, on the basis of this tool, but it is a very, very useful tool in its basic form. The fluorochrome itself um, is excited in terms of the extinction coefficient, as I've already discussed, and it's excited at a specific absorbed maximum wavelength. This is the optimum. <laughs> With few examples, the excitation of the fluorochrome is never at the absorbance maxima. It's far away from that. And then the emission is depicted by the quantum fluorescence. The degree of emission is depicted by the quantum fluorescence of that particular fluorochrome. And the value that we are given for the quantum fluorescence is a value that's measured over the entire spectral emission value. And you never measure the entire spectral emission of a fluorochrome, apart from occasionally when you're using a very broad long pass filter, but that is uh, on your instrument. But, but that, again, um, is not always the norm. So the, the theoretical value that you get um, that de should depict the fluorochrome of extinction coefficient multiplied by the quantum fluorescence is virtually never reached, but it will give you the extinction coefficient and the quantum fluorescence, and this value that usually for the quantum fluorescence goes between 0.5 um, to less than 1, uh, just below less than 1, is very much a theoretical value, but again, it's very much like the spectral viewer. It will actually give you an indication of um, what you are dealing with, but it will not be a finite value that will give you an absolute value. Um, these are some very useful values. These stain indexes are basically um, the function of um, the fluorochrome that has been placed onto a cell. It is then run on a flow cytometer and you look at the negative content of that staining as opposed to the positive content of the staining. And this stain index is a very, very good value in terms of the brightness of that fluorochrome. The brightness of the fluorochrome with respect to the autofluorescence of the cells that you're dealing with. And it should be remembered that these values here all these values down here rely on the quantum fluorescence, the extinction coefficient, the autofluorescence of the cells that you're dealing with, the power of the lasers, and the filter setup of your instrument. So these values should not be interpreted as a finite value that you can achieve on your particular <coughs> instrument. It's instrument dependent, it's cell dependent, and it's laser power dependent also. Ian, just a quick question whilst we're going through. So uh, certainly the stain index value is, is very, the value is very much dependent on the instrument, but would you expect the order of, of the fluorochromes to be the same irrespective? Yes, the order should be very similar to what you see in front of you, yes. And this gets us to the statement that we've all heard people say before is that you reserve the brightest fluorochrome, in brightness in inverted commas, for the antigens that have the lowest cellular concentration. And 
also reserve the less bright fluorochromes for the antigens that contain the highest cellular concentration of your antigen. Um, this is just a, a common sense approach. And the stain index you can see here is depicted by the signal from the cell, which is depicted by this positive peak, but it's also depicted by the width of the autofluorescence. So the stain index is this distance from the negative to the positive um, divided by the width or standard deviation that can be achieved by the negative part of the cell. And the standard deviation is very important because as you can see, if we take this narrow peak, the distance from the positive to this narrow peak is far greater than if you have a highly autofluorescent cell such as mesenchymal stem cells, such as embryonic stem cells, as opposed to, say, lymphocytes. So the stain index also will, will vary from cell type to cell type as well as from instrument to instrument. 